Praise God. Acts chapter 2. If you love the bishop, would you get loud and clap your hands and thank the Lord. Give honor to him and Sister Foster. Honor to my beautiful wife. Honor to all the teachers that are here today. Amen. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, 16 to 18, and 37 to 39. Several people will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost this morning in this place. So far, 282 people in the last eight weeks, eight and a half weeks, have received the Holy Ghost, and more are going to get it today in Jesus' name. Praise God. Holy Ghost is the ultimate teacher. If you don't believe that, read John 14, 26. Because the Bible says the Holy Ghost, which will teach you all things. Amen. John, or Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire sat upon each of them and they were all filled. Everybody say they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 16 says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel or Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams on my servants and on my handmaidens. I will pour out in those days of my spirit. Verse 37 to 39. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. Somebody shout, that's me. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to preach to you this morning, you're getting the Holy Ghost today. If you're a guest this morning... I am preaching to you. If you go to this church and you say, well, you preach on the Holy Ghost a lot on Sundays, maybe you should show up the rest of the revival. Because I've been preaching to the church on Wednesdays and Saturdays and Fridays, and, but Sunday mornings is specifically for these guests that are here. It's time for miracles to happen in their life. Somebody worship the Lord for what's about to happen in this place today. I worship you, Lord. I exalt you, Jesus. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're getting the Holy Ghost today. Turn to the other neighbor and tell them you really need the Holy Ghost today. And you may be seated. What could have been better than Jesus being with you? What could have been better than being there when he fed 5,000 people with a few loaves and a few fish. What could have been better than being there with him and him being there with you as you watched him walk on water in a storm and no human had ever done that before but being in the boat and seeing him do that and then him stepping in the boat and being with you. How amazing must have that have been? How powerful was that to see when Jesus walked on the water. What could have been more amazing than being there at the graveyard when he said, Lazarus, come forth, and a man dressed as a mummy walked out of a tomb 26 steps up and then out into the earth's atmosphere and was made whole by the power of the spoken word of God. What could have been better than being there with him when blind Bartimaeus screamed out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on 
me. And Jesus instantly stopped and brought him to him and, was, and touched him and healed his eyesight. What could have been better than all the times being in the crowd, watching him and being there with him as he healed the lame and the halt and the blind and the deaf, the cripple. It didn't matter what the disease was. The lepers were always healed. He constantly did the miraculous being there with Jesus and then seeing him being there with you that had to be the most amazing thing in that day in the planet being in the crowd and knowing Jesus Christ is here with me right now but I'm here to tell you this morning there's something better than Jesus being with you and that is Jesus being in you There's something better than him being out there somewhere hearing your prayer. And that thing that's better is knowing that he is living inside of me. Is anyone thankful right now for the power of Jesus Christ living inside of you? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever he's done before, he can do again. And miracles are his specialty. He loves to heal. He loves to deliver. He wants you to be pain-free. He wants to touch your mind. He wants to deliver you from drugs and alcohol and perversion. There's nothing out there in this planet that's evil that the Lord cannot deliver you from. He has all authority and all power and all dominion to rescue you even the worst of the worst I wish someone would believe it right now I don't care if you're an atheist he wants to save you right now I don't care if you're a Satanist he wants to save you and he has the power to do <laughs> greatest miracle I've ever seen and I've seen the dead raised and I've seen the cripples walk and I've seen the deaf hear several times and the blind see several times. And I've seen all kinds of tumors disappear. And that's not to boast. That's just being in the atmosphere when he did it. I didn't do it. He did it. I've seen all that stuff. Pretty much every miracle in the Bible as far as the book of Acts, as far as New Testament, I've been blessed to see those things. But the greatest miracle I've ever seen is when God filled me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the second greatest miracle I've ever seen is watching someone else get the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's the greatest miracle on the planet. You can be healed of cancer and go to hell. You can be healed of diabetes and go to hell. You can be healed of blindness and go to hell. But if you are born of the water and of the spirit, like the Bible said, that's entrance into the kingdom of God. The greatest miracle you can ever receive is the Spirit of God coming inside of you. Do you realize what happens when you are born of the Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost? The creator of the universe comes down from heaven and now lives inside of you. And you think that's, that may not impress you. That scares the daylights out of hell because the spirits that they send to attack your mind with are not just fighting you now. They're fighting the creator of the universe. And there's more more power in his breath than anything hell's ever had to attack a human with are you thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost it's greater than it's greater than suicide it's greater than torment it's greater than depression I don't care what nightmares the devil's brought to you if the Holy Ghost gets up in you that's the greatest thing you'll ever have hell cannot fight that Somebody shout hallelujah. It's the greatest miracle any human being has ever received. Receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's greater than drugs. I said it a few weeks ago. I'll say it again. Try any drug you want to try. There's still no high like the most high God, period. Oh, I wish I had a witness of someone that would say, I've tried drugs and I've tried Jesus and I'm so thankful I tried. 
Only eight of you? Where are the real people out in here? Where are the real people out in here that have been to hell and back and know the Lord brought me out of that stuff and the Lord gave me power over that? I see you back there. Try any alcoholic beverage. You, I can tell I'm up to come down here. Some of y'all are trying to give me the death stare. You can try any drink you want to try. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the devil offers you. It doesn't matter what's out there. Drink any beverage you want to drink. It's still not going to bless you like the Holy Ghost will. You'll have a hangover and a headache. But when you get the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you, he said you'll never thirst again. Is there anyone ready for God to fill them with his spirit? You'll never thirst again if you get the power of the Holy Ghost inside of you. Let the worshipers arise and let the critics be silenced right now. The Holy Ghost is in here and we need people to realize it's the greatest thing you'll ever receive. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is nothing as powerful as the Holy Ghost. I don't care what relationship you're in. I don't care how perverted your life is. If God wants to deliver you, and he does, he can deliver you from any lifestyle. Get mad if you want to get mad. I do not care. But the God that I serve is greater than homosexuality. He shall I wish you would act apostolic. If you're really apostolic in here, I'm telling you that God, where is the church at right now in this building? Where is this Dallas First Church at right now? I'm finding spirits in here this morning. We have power over every spirit, every devil, every bit of hell. Let the worshipers arise and show the enemy. We still believe the truth. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm not preaching to you, but I'm there, there's a spirit in here that's a little mad right now. Something's going on. The devil didn't like it last week when 28 people went down in the water in the name of the Lord Jesus. He's ticked off, and he doesn't want to fight this because he realizes you are not bound by anything anymore. If you want to be free, Shataya, you can be free in this building. There's nothing in your life that can keep you hostage. You've got dominion at power over everything the devil has it the holy ghost is bigger than your past if you've got a past and you've got the holy ghost you ought to shout right now because you know if it had not been for He made a way. He brought you out. He rescued us. I was preaching in Florida. No, I was preaching in California. This is a two-part story, Florida and California. First part happened in California. Lady walked up to the altar. She said, I had to see if this was just as real here as it was in the prison cell. I said, what do you mean? She said, my name is Crystal. I was in prison up until last week. She said, somebody brought a recording in of the revival you're preaching. And you preached on the Holy Ghost. And she said, me and my cellmate were sitting there. And we were listening to it. And she said, we were listening to it. And you said at the end, have everyone come to the front. And we're going to pray and repent. And we repented in our cell. And she said, then you said, I'm going to pray a prayer of faith, and you're going to shout hallelujah, and God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And she said, I looked at my cellmate and thought, this is crazy. And we raised our hands in our cell. She said, the next thing you know, God filled both me and my cellmate with the gift of the Holy Ghost in our cell. (laughs) 
I don't care where you are, it will find you. It will find you when it wants to rescue you. I went to Florida, preached that story in a men's conference. Wasn't even planned to preach, it was at a men's conference. And right towards the end of the message, God put that in my mind, so I just told it. 201 men got the Holy Ghost that night. Two years later, a man walks up to me. He said, you're not going to believe this. I was at that men's conference. He said, I'm a director of a prison ministry outside Tampa. I said, okay. He said, I took that, I ordered that DVD. I went to the, to the prison. We have 17, 17 inmates that come to my service. He said, I went and I just played it. I didn't say a word. He said, when you made the altar call, they all stood up in the, in the prison. He said, they all walked to the front of the room. They repented. And when you said, raise your hands. And when you prayed the prayer of faith, he said, I watched with my own eyes in that prison as God filled all 17 men with the gift of the Holy Ghost but wait he said it gets better I went back this last year he said and there was 18 new inmates I just brought the DVD I just pushed play and I sat back and at the end those 18 new inmates walked to the front and they raised their hands and God filled all 18 of them with the gift shakata, of the Holy Ghost because that's the greatest weapon that we have the power of the Spirit of God well how do I get the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 2 verse number 4 we read it earlier let's read it again Acts 2 verse 4 they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance Acts chapter 10 verse 45 and verse 46 Acts 10 45 and 46 it says, and they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Acts chapter 19, verse 5 and verse number 6. Acts chapter 19, verse 5 and verse 6. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And verse 6 said, when Paul laid his hand upon them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied in your Bible when people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost the evidence that they received it they spoke with other tongues in other words when God fills you with his spirit the proof to you that you have it is it comes out of your mouth in a different language you will not understand Shokata, what you are saying but it will come out of your mouth and God will let you know that he now lives inside of you. If you think, this is not to criticize, but if you think you received the Holy Ghost, but you did not speak in tongues, you felt God. But if God truly fills you with his spirit, you can't keep him down on the inside because his spirit is the Holy Spirit and that is uncontainable and if, you, if heaven is his throne watch this if heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool you want to tell me when he pours himself into you that you can keep him locked down You're, you and I are a speck on this earth but the proof is in the pudding. When he pours it into you, you will receive it. And it, Jesus said it will come out of your belly like rivers of living water. In other words, you will speak it out. You, that's the evidence that God now lives inside of you. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have a real question for everybody in here. Why would you not want him inside of you? Don't tell me you're a Christian, a Christ follower, but do not want the Holy Ghost in you. That's, that's quiet, but it's right. I don't want to stand before God on judgment day and say, I didn't want your spirit living me in me on the earth, but give me my mansion. 
It's not good. He said, if you deny me down here, I'll deny you up there. I don't want him denying me ever. I want to come before the throne boldly. I want to have mercy. Is there anyone that would recognize I need the mercy of God in my life? Would anyone recognize I need mercy? I need grace. I remember, I'm just about to remember in a service in Stockton a few years ago, there was this, this young lady that they said had, had uh, been uh, involved in these cults, and she was pouring herself into these cults and living this terrible life. And then on a Saturday night, she was doing this demonic worship, and something spoke to her in this demonic devil-worshiping service. It should have never spoke to her, but it did. She was living her life for the devil all out. And the voice said this to her, God doesn't care about you. And that voice thought it was going to make her feel low and ashamed. But it made her think, you just said there's a God. I didn't think there was a God. I was worshiping this spirit, she said, and it just told me that there was a God. So she said, this thing must be lying to me. I'm going to go to that church tomorrow. And she walked in with her family, and she raised her hands, and God filled her with the Holy Ghost immediately. He does care about you. He does love you. He does want to save you. He does. I curse witchcraft in this room right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know who is diving into that garbage, but you hear me right now. God has greater power than sorcery, than palm reading, than anything you're delving into. He wants to rescue you from that pit of sin. Stand to your feet right now. Hell would love to tell you that God doesn't care. But one encounter at this altar and everyone in here will know. <laughs> one altar call, one breakthrough. <laughs> One powerful touch from God, and you'll know, wow, I have been missing this a long time. And I, if you're new here, I want to tell you something right now. We're not crazy. We're thankful. And if you are one of these people that say, I'm, just, I'm not emotional. Oh, help me, Lord, to be nice. You're lying, first of all. Because if your kid runs in front of a semi, you'll get emotional. The word should be you're not desperate. But God knows that when you do get desperate, there's only one answer you will find that will take care of it all. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you something. I may have told this. I don't know why. I'm, God's talking to me right now. There was a man performing open heart surgery in Houston, Texas. I'm mean, not open heart surgery, heart transplant surgery. And there was a class of people watching behind a glass wall. Eli Hernandez, his wife, was in the class. And they were watching through the window. And he took the heart out of the man. And he went to that cooler or the ice where the, uh, the new heart was, and he pulled the heart out, and he put the new heart in the man. And the heart did not beat. So he massaged the heart, and the heart still did not beat. So he slapped the heart, and the heart still did not respond. And in a last-ditch effort to save the man's life, he took the shock paddles out and shocked the heart and the heart began to beat. 
There are three ways God will talk to your heart. He'll come and love on you. You can make it. You can do it. You can get out of this. God, I have a plan for you. Don't quit. Don't give up. Come on. The church loves you. Come on. Be there. That's the massaging dimension. But if you ignore that, because he loves you so much. Anyone ever been slapped by God before? Six people, 30 people? Oh, yeah. Well, now we're starting to get honest. Those slaps don't feel good. Flat tire, what? Where'd this spill come from? Now I need God to provide. I'm preaching good. I can. I know it. When I know when it's bad too, but I know when it's good. And if you ignore the slap, when God really loves you, He'll do whatever He has to do to get your attention. You can show, I don't have to go to the altar. Come on. Come on. Walk away. Walk away from the massage of God, from the hand of God saying, I love you. It's a dangerous thing because he wants to save us so bad that he, don't test him. He went to a cross for it. I love you this much to bleed out for you. I love you this much to lay here and stretch out my arms and let them nail my hands and nail my feet into a piece of wood. Don't tell me he doesn't love you. He loves everyone in this building right now more than we love anyone in this building. Here's how you get the Holy Ghost, all right? Number one. Number one, you must repent of your sins. Everyone say, I must repent. Cannot get the Holy Ghost if you don't repent of your sins. Before we ever pray for the Holy Ghost, we'll, pray for, we'll, we'll repent of our sins. And we will repent, and God will wash and erase sins. And if you've not been baptized, we can baptize you in Jesus' name and get your sins washed away forever in the name of the Lord. Someone knows what that's all about if you were here last Sunday. Number two, number two, you must desire the Holy Ghost. If you do not want it, you will not get it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have to want it to receive it. If everybody on your row wants the Holy Ghost and you do not, God will fill everybody with the Holy Ghost and jump over you. Now, that's really rough preaching, but it's the truth. He loves you enough to let you say no. He'll do whatever he's got to do to get your attention. I don't want him to do anything to get my attention. He deserves all of my attention. Number three, you have to focus your mind on God. When you pray for the Holy Ghost, it's not about who's praying with you, what the preacher's doing, what you're going to eat after church. Your mind is on God. The greatest way to get your mind on God, if you're physically able, is to lift your head and lift your hand. That's the receiving position, as we call it. You get in the receiving position. You're focusing on the Lord pouring His Spirit into you. The reason we say that is because most people that we pray for that are praying for a miracle or the Holy Ghost, when they start to hang their head, guess what? They stop focusing on God and start focusing on themselves. And you can't get the Holy Ghost thinking about you. That was cute. Three amens, but it's right. You cannot get the Holy Ghost praying and thinking about yourself. It's not about how good you are or bad you are. It's about how great He is. It's not about me, it's about him. Number four, you have to have faith that you're getting the Holy Ghost today. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm getting the Holy Ghost today. 
and tell them you need the Holy Ghost today. Faith is I'm not leaving without it. Faith is I'm getting healed. Faith is if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. Faith is if I scream out his name, something's going to happen. That's faith. And number five, here's the big one. Everybody look up here. Here's the big one. To receive the Holy Ghost, to speak in tongues, you have to worship God with your own mouth. It does you no good to have someone to pray for you. And I'm not making light. But this is what you're going to do. It does no good. Now, I'm not saying you can't think about your prayers. All. I'm not. But to receive the Holy Ghost, you have to worship God with your mouth. The Bible says cloven tongues like as a fire sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the, they started moving their tongue. They started worshiping God. And God filled them with the Holy Ghost. How do I worship God? Maybe this is your first service and you have no idea what, what do I say? What do I, I'll tell you what you do. The greatest way to get God's attention, okay? The greatest way, the quickest way to get God's attention, number one, is to start telling him hallelujah. You know why? Because hallelujah means I give everything to Jehovah. It means it's the highest praise I can give you. And so when you start to give him the best you can give him, the Bible says he dwells in the praises of Israel. So when you, and that's his people. So when you start to worship him and you start to tell him, hallelujah, I love you, Jesus, hallelujah, whatever comes here, you are giving him the best, the best praise you can give him. And when you give him your best, he comes to, the Bible says, draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you. And in just a few moments, after we've all repented of our sins, and we're in the front, and I'll pray a prayer of faith, which is just simple, me just releasing my faith with your faith. And people are going to pray with you. And you're going to raise your hands. And you're going to start to shout hallelujah. I'll tell you when to do it. And when you start to shout hallelujah, instantly some of you, that'll be the last thing you say in English or that you say in Spanish. And instantly you begin to worship God and the heavenly language will begin to flow out of you. And when it does, don't hold it down. Don't critique it. Don't analyze it. You're not the teacher. You're the student now. The Holy Ghost shall teach you all things. He's the teacher. And so when you begin to worship him and love him, he pours himself into you and it comes out of you like rivers of living water. And this part's for the devil right here. When they get the Holy Ghost today, the Bible says they get power when they receive the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. That means whatever you fight, whatever you struggle with, whatever you're bound by, when you get the Holy Ghost, God gives you power over whatever the addiction is, the weakness is, the struggle is.